Now tuning in to Earbud Media. Audio for everyone. And scream. <laughs> no matter where you are, no matter where you're listening to this, just like let out a real nice guttural scream. That is the vine I relate to the most, <laughs> is the Grinch in the yoga studio. Oh my god. <laughs> no matter what, like that is the one that is me. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, whenever my therapist asks me how I'm doing, I'm always like, yeah, fine. But always, the answer is a scream. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, what I, I can say whatever I want, but re- deep inside, in my soul, in my spirit, just a scream. And, like, I think she knows how I'm doing because my answer is, great, how are you? And, like, it's in the same breath. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> She's like, mm. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> God, I had an interaction the other day where I started with, oh, how are you? And he was like, yeah, I'm great, whatever. And then later he's like, how are you? And I'm like, I'm great, how are you? And I'm like, fuck. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like, I can't, I can't answer that question without asking the question back. Like, I can't just like dwell. I'm like, I'm like all right, and you, sir? <laughs> yep. What's up? That's <laughs> fuck. Literally same. Yeah. Yep. Why can I ever give an authentic answer? <laughs> I just have to just shoot away from my feelings as quickly as possible. Am I right, ladies? Am I right, Am ladies? I right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Oh, uh, yep. Nothing says the holidays more than just deflecting your personal emotions. Yeah, just finger gunning right. your way <laughs> out of authenticity <laughs> with yourself and the people who care about you. <laughs> oh, that's so good for audio, you know? Yeah. Yes. Great. <laughs> Cody, how the hell are you? I'm great. It was a really good eyebrow day for me. Ooh. So that's exciting. Haven't had one of those Ooh. in a while. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. How are you doing, friend? I'm... Great. I just took a sip of my water. It doesn't taste like water. Uh-oh. <laughs> mm. No. I've been poisoned. Is Seattle okay? Is there water okay? <laughs> Here's the thing. I think I... I think this was water that I accidentally got from the tap and rather than by Brita filter. Sure. And it tastes like shit. Um, <laughs> so great. I'm just gonna have to suffer without water. Today. Um, I've been poisoned. <laughs> I've been poisoned. I've been fatally ill. She will die at the end of this recording. <laughs> yep, this is just a a podcast of me slowly dying throughout it, which if that is not more on brand, yeah. then I don't know what else is. Yes, I am fine. I think I'm coming down with a <laughs> cold. Because <laughs> all of my middle schoolers are germy mutants. Sure, yep. And they love to just come up to me and each other and everything and just cough all over them. <laughs> yeah, just the whole, um, every square foot. <laughs> that's just how they greet each other now. Yeah. Um, it used to be that, like, kind of, like, bro-ish hug, you know, sure. where they, like, grasp each other's shoulders and, like, pat. Now they just cough at each other. I don't know <laughs> what that is. Yeah, they're germy beings, and I think I'm I'm fighting a cold. But, yes, other than that... And just the the need to scream yeah. constantly. Think I am okay ish. I'm doing a lot of things with my hands right now, which for an audio medium doesn't truly come off. Yeah, but it's just here and it's just in the space, you know. Yeah, it brings um, a nice fun little quirky element to the whole thing, you know. Uh huh. A little twist. Um, I turns. think. <laughs> It does. It does. I think the other thing, too, is I'm still having residual effects from the amount of holiday food that I ate last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll eat fucking potatoes and stuffing any day of the week. Don't even fucking try me. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's fair. 
Now, I must say, I think I've made this quite clear throughout our two years of podcasting yeah. that I have a very anti-stuffing platform. <laughs> now, I, this year... This is what tears our friendship apart. <laughs> <laughs> this year, I expanded my horizons. Uh-huh. I tried something new. Yeah. My boyfriend's family is very pro-stuffing, yep. which I cannot relate to. <laughs> and... Um, he was like, now be prepared. My mom's going to make a gluten-free stuffing for you and you need to pretend to like it. And I was like, mm. <laughs> and I tried it. And Cody, I must say, I kind of liked it. Dude, yeah. You just had to find the right stuffing, you know? Yeah. It was dry and I liked that. Because most of the sure. other times when I've had stuffing, they're so wet. Yeah, they can be a little sloppy for sure. For sure. And I hate that. Yeah. I don't like to tap my fork against something and it make a sound. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, I mean that's understandable. Um also I did finally watch Home Alone. I'm so proud of you. I saw that tweet and I just like a, a tear a, one a singular tear went down my face out of just joy and happiness. It was Buck Wild, I must say. Yeah, I mean it's a Buck Wild film. Yeah. It was it was a lot. I'm I've heard so much hype about Home Alone 2 that I couldn't help but think about that after yeah. and during watching. It's great. So I think I've seen the that. second one more than I've seen the first one. I've heard that from almost everyone it's so on this good, planet. It's it's in the big city, baby. It's <laughs> the only thing that's not great about it is that Donald Trump is in it. But other than that, right. it's great. Wow. Have I told you, have I told the pod yet that I am planning a trip to New York Ooh, next year? Gal in the big city. I know. The big Snapple. And he's Coast Bonch. Ooh. I know. So, that's an exciting development. So, good things on the horizon. Yeah, baby. Speaking of good things on the horizon, we have... transition. I know, thank you. Thank you. It's even better when you call the most amount of attention to it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, seamless. (laughs) Just like nothing ever happened. uh, (laughs) We have... Folks, buckle your asses in. Strap in, Scream so much. We have so much news this week. Um, And all of it is important, and all of it is valuable, and all of it, I think, is Twilight related. Well, yeah. (laughs) Um, uh, Thankfully, we don't have on our news this week, but it's just an honorable mention. Um, Rita Ora's (laughs) Thanksgiving parade (laughs) presentation, but... You know, just know that even though we're not talking about it, we now are. So, yeah. Great. First up is <laughs> um, Anna Kendrick, as always. Just light of our lives. Just the the most important, truly. Um, this week, I guess last week for you all. Sure. But, you know, wow. The most relatable tweet to come from her, <laughs> truly, And I got sent this an embarrassing amount of times. Not only was this sent to us on our our joint Twitter, our Twilight Twitter, but it was sent to me personally (laughs) an embarrassing amount of times um, of her saying on Twitter, holy shit, I just remembered I was in Twilight. Yep. And... The responses that she received, I think, were some of my personal favorites. And the memes that came out of it were pretty good as well. Yeah. A lot of good memes. But I just think that it was it was pretty good. That, you know, on the 10-year anniversary uh, out of all of this, that she wrote about it in her book. Right. <laughs> and she was still like, oh, yeah, that's a thing that happened. So thank you, Anna Kendrick, for this amazing gift thank you that for you everything. brought to us. Thank you. Really? Yes. Um, thank you. I haven't talked about this in a while, but just thanks for the hug that you gave me. Oh my god, yeah. I kind of forget that happens all the time. Yeah, same. Um, I forget that it happens too until I have a photo of it up in my classroom. <laughs> like, I have a ton of photos up in my classroom, um, but I have that one too, and my kids are like, is that? And I'm like, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Other things. Could you do me the honor and talk about our case stew corner for this week, please? Oh, God, I'd love nothing more. 
I, it's the most important, arguably. Okay, Sue's back. She never left, but she's back. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we have a write-up from Hunter Harris, which is the only person that matters. She's so good. Yes. If you don't follow her on Twitter, you are, just delete your account. You don't, like, there's nothing else going for you. Also, such a powerful name. It's so good. It's so good. I love that name. She's so lovely. Anyway. I love the name Hunter. She wrote about Kristen Stewart. Because, y'all, we're getting a gay Kristen Stewart holiday movie. And all of those words in one sentence, <laughs> is so, they're all so perfect. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I thought we were being spoiled <sighs> with Charlie's Angels. True. And then you give me this? Ugh. You give me this? Ugh. It's called Happiest Season. And it's supposed and it truly to be is. about Kay Stu trying to propose to her girlfriend over Christmas. And then she's like, whoops, didn't realize my girlfriend was not out to her family. What do I do? Boop, 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 boop. And then also Christmas, probably. And I just, <laughs> I, yeah. mm, I'm crying. Yeah. And just think about the mistletoe. Just think about it. Think about all the tropes that are going to be there. I just... I'm crying. I love holiday yeah. movies. I love gay. I'm just, ah. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. You're fine. I'm not <laughs> crying. You're crying. I'm, it's fine. Now, we were sent this BuzzFeed, not quiz, but article. Listicle. Sure. Let's be honest. Let's not give them this much credit. It is called <laughs> 31 Twilight Guys Ranked from, quote, dead to me. To, quote, bite me, please. Nice. N- nice. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> and this is from three BuzzFeed staff who all weigh in on these but people. But also they, like, don't give a briefer or anything. They just go straight into the list. Like, I feel like I needed yep. some context here of, like, oh, these people are, like, seeing these people for the first time and judging if they're hot. Or, like, oh, these people all watch Twilight and they're, like, judging... If they're hot based on how they know them and the movie or whatever. It's just like, hey, 31, let's go. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yep. No foreplay yeah. at they're all. they're all from Australia, um, which is fun. It's a fun little twist. It is. It is a fun little twist. So, yes, we get their opinion out of 10 and then their thirst level ranking. Yeah. So, I wanted to know if any of these were surprising <laughs> to you at all. I think it's very good how relatively high Mr. Molina is. <laughs> I'm very... Listen, Mr. Molina... Listen, listen, <laughs> Someone I gave mean, him a six. <laughs> like, that's pretty high. He could... I Michelle says Mr. Molina could get a little, and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> like, He loves plants and educating the youth, you know? And that's great. I'm, I love that. Yeah. And I I respect it. I think the thing and this is going to come to a surprise to no sure. one. But Mike Newton <laughs> fucking Mike Newton is on this list. I mean, yeah, of course. But but like the someone dared to rank him a seven and a half <laughs> out of ten. And I think this person's name is Isha. Yeah. And they said, I could be in the minority here, but I feel like Mike's thirst factor, factor is severely underrated. He is pure and wholesome and is probably hiding a six pack underneath all those layers. Seven and a half out of oh ten. My God. First of all, no, <laughs> no, no, absolutely not, sir. The devil incarnate, actually. Um, I have another bone to pick with the, Isha. Uh, <laughs> please. Because they lowered Charlie Swan's ranking by a severe amount. Everyone else gave them yes. like a 7.5 or 8 out of 10. And then Isha swooped in with a 1. Bringing him to and a that's number 14. Wrong. It's just incorrect. It, yeah, it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Jenna gets it right. Yeah. Jenna gets it right by calling Charlie Swan Daddy yeah. Swan. Welcome. And that's, welcome to the fold. <laughs> welcome to the space. Jenna, you're welcome here anytime. Mm-hmm. 
the fact that Benjamin, aka Rami Malek, doesn't make it into the top tw- ten is yeah, a crime. That's criminal. Like this is this Buzzfeed quiz is trash. Also, right away, uh, someone calls Jasper the Michael Sarah of the Twilight universe, and I can't stop thinking about it. I that's so I correct. hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. That's that is correct, yeah. and I it's right. I hate it. I hate the thing that was said. But they're not wrong. No, they're not wrong at all. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just looked at um, Garrett, yeah. aka my love, yeah. my yeah. life, um, and I just choked. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> ugh. Are you serious? This man. This uh, whole ass meal. Sometimes I forget just how beautiful the the cast is for Breaking Dawn. Like, the fact that they put Lee Pace yeah. in this is beautiful. What did um, they deserve that But the, the fact that they... The fact that they only gave him a first level of seven... Yeah, I mean, he should be sorry. number one. I'll say it. Um, And the fact that he's below Emmett Cullen... Mm-hmm. Mm, sorry. Daddy Malfoy is there, number five. Um, Isha gets it. In saying that Carlisle gives off major daddy vibes. So, like, you get it with Carlisle, but you don't get it with Charlie? Yeah, hmm. Come on. Hmm. Hmm. People um, are just intimidated the fact that by Edward, the mustache, all right? They can't handle it. That's true. Edward is number three, which, yikes, <laughs> first of all. Um, <laughs> it's yikes. James is number two, which is bullshit. Top, the top five is bad. It's just, I mean, the top four is bad. The top four is bad. Yeah, it's all wrong. For a second, I thought that they didn't have a four, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's just, it's Paul, but, like, I mean, listen, I yeah, get it. Yeah, I mean, um, it's fine. Paul's hot. It's fine. Like, I get it. See number um, four, though? See number four? No, absolutely no. not. Now, here's the thing. They put Jacob, <laughs> a.k.a. Taylor Lautner, as number one. And I, listen, <laughs> I have... A severe crush on Taylor Lautner. It's so embarrassing. Like, it's a problem. It's embarrassing for me. It's embarrassing for everybody. It's a it's problem. To I know you. am dealing with. It. <laughs> but he is not number one, and I know that in my right. soul. <laughs> Resident Jacob Black apologist, <laughs> Ali speaks out. <laughs> yes. Now, do I agree with Isha here when they say, I was 13 years old when I saw Jacob shirtless for the first time, and let me tell you, I felt some things? Um, yes, sure. I agree. But he is not number one. It's just, it's not true. Yeah. It's just, it's not. This last article is the pedestrian one, which is arguably the most embarrassing <laughs> yes. out of all of these. It's Allie in the future. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, <laughs> I got a blast. Um, No, it's just, I gotta (laughs) go. Um, The article is, we asked Twilight diehards whether they regret their tattoos 10 years on. (sighs) It's very good. It's the most important, basically. There's just so many, there's so many beautiful tattoos on here. Um, I mean, beautiful is the choice word. (laughs) They're profound, I yes. think. <laughs> um, they're eye-catching. They're forever, you know? The one that I think is my favorite out of all of these... Actually, I think it's a tie. One is the one... The Edward one that they have it's on here. It's a full portrait. Yep. Full uh, bust portrait of Edward with the little rose. Oh, this it, woman's like Shin. <laughs> yeah, it's Edward from New Moon. So, Duster and all, just broody <laughs> yeah. and shit. Yeah. But rather than, like, in the New Moon photo, he's, like, looking directly into the camera. And in the tattoo, he's not? He's got, like, a nice little side eye. It's like, what are you, what's going Who on? Who are you looking at? And then why is there a rose? Um, yeah, there's a lot of questions. The other one that I love is this forever one, um, <laughs> because of the the font choice. I think um, the V and forever is just a little off. Um, it looks like a U. It does look like a U. And also, there's a little heart above it too, that kind of makes it look like the dot of an I. 
So it looks like all the wrong letters. All of them. All, all of them. Every letter's wrong. <laughs> yep. So yes, I, wow, is all I'm going to say. I have yeah. a lot of fandom-related tattoos. I'm not going to say that I would be getting a Twilight-related tattoo. But who knows? Who's to say? I don't know. I know. I know. <laughs> um, who's to say? I know. I'm to say. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, our last piece of current events related news is about us. Ooh. Um, and it's that when this comes out, we will have merch, which is wild to say. Yeah, baby. When this comes out, I would check our podcast description for a link. Yes. Um, yep. As well as Twitter, our Twitter yeah. specifically. All the hits. We will have a bonfire campaign going on with podcast merch for several different things to yeah. celebrate our two-year anniversary, <laughs> um, which for us means, like, uh, two years. We're coming up on 100 episodes, which is wild. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, gross. And we're also trying to do this to get transcripts for all of our podcasts as well yeah. um and that costs money ladies it does yes hold hard cash so in order to expand um as many people into the family as possible we want to be able to raise funds for this we have some Ooh. obviously because of patreon but we want to be able to have our whole backlog included in this as well um so you'll be able to go on bonfire and see all of the fantastic apparel that we have that is get bit related um yeah, yeah. and they're and super cute Maddie they Padilla are is great our queen our god our queen she did the art for the podcast that you're listening to right now it's beautiful yes and she's lovely and um, the shirts are gonna be cute you're gonna be the coolest kid in town so like heck yeah. fucking run and we've both purchased from Bonfire campaigns before. Their shirts are ridiculously comfortable. They're the softest things on the planet. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck they do, um, <laughs> but I I used to wear mine out. I was like, oh yeah, these will be my fancy like go out shirts. I'll have graphic uh -huh. tees, and then quickly that became a like, uh, no, these are my sleep shirts because they're fucking comfortable. I have a hoodie too, and that shit, I want to sleep in that forever. I'll just yeah. put it on and be like, all right, goodbye, everyone. That's it. Yeah, my hoodie became a, ooh, I have cramps hoodie because it's so comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So check it out. Support us. But it's also supporting more people joining the space. So yeah. it works on all haunts. So, you know, support accessible podcasting. Methods. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, good things. Love it. We have a question this week. Um, yeah. It is bringing it back to old holidays of yore. <laughs> um, and it is, Halloween has passed, but what do you think the Fifty Shades gang, including Taylor, would dress as? <sighs> Taylor, <laughs> now that we confirmed, and we'll talk about this this week, um, right. but now that we confirmed that Taylor and Mrs. Jones are fucking... Yeah. Um, which I felt like it was obvious before, but confirmed now. Listen, Anna doesn't get context clues. <laughs> True. Taylor would dress up as, um, like a sexy maid. Like Ooh. a sexy housewife maid yes. or whatever. Just to fucking subvert expectations. In, and also because it would gross Christian out really bad. Around his daughter, though, like, if he was taking his daughter trick-or-treating, he would dress up as fucking, what is his name, David Harbour from Stranger Things. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah, I think that'd be cute. I love that. Mrs. Jones mm -hmm. would be the head lady from Hocus Pocus. Ooh, that would be great. I think she'd have a lot of fun with that. I don't know Hocus Pocus because I've never seen it, but I feel like that God was <laughs> I feel like that was a popular one at Spirit this year. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian would be <laughs> a 
like a 1920s gangster. Like oh, he because he wouldn't sure. want to dress up, so he would just take one of his suits that he already had. Right. And be like, this is something, right? Yeah. Listen, okay, listen. I have some expertise here as someone who works in costume retail. Yeah, um, why the fuck am I answering? You do this question. That's Go- true. I, <laughs> but specifically with, like, uh, 20s costumes, like, that is the most popular costume, like, year-round. Because people love throwing fancy flapper par- parties and, like, 20s parties. Sure. It's a big business thing. It's a big, like, New Year's thing. Whatever. And every single time... A heterosexual couple comes in, and the dude is like, all right, I got a suit. I'm just going to get, like, a $5 hat and a Tommy gun. Done. God. And then the woman spends, like, $200 (laughs) on, like, (laughs) a nice dress, like, pearl necklaces, cigarette holders, and, like, flap the headbands. Right. All this shit. Wigs, even. Like, the whole fucking nine yards. Right. Every single time. And I'm like, yeah, I I can't (laughs) believe the audacity. Yep, that actually sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, that that sounds like their relationship in a couple's costume. Yeah. Um, uh, I want Anna to be, like, some sort of author that'd just be such a dumb costume to be, like, no one would recognize it unless she said it and be, like, do you get it? Like, do I feel you like- get it? I'm Virginia Woolf. And you're like, what? <laughs> so that's okay. exactly what I was about to say. She's going to yeah. be like Virginia Woolf or like Agatha Christie or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, she's going to be like the fucking milk and honey person. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Ruby Core. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I'm going to be someone who's alive right now. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's just like the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just puts a picture of a milk carton and right. like a picture of honey on her. She's holding, like, a bear jar of honey. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. get it? Anna, love... why are you calling, like, why are you carrying these around with you all night? Who says I love just, like, old fiction? I can get into the new stuff, too. You know what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Anna, you work at a publishing house. All you do is read new books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is your job. <laughs> yeah, the joke's on her, though. Like, she gets away with it because they aren't actually published yet. <laughs> right. So... God damn it. She's the actual worst. Um, yeah. I just wish that she was written better. Um, I yeah. want to like, I want to like her. I want to know her, but I know nothing. At least like with Bella, right? She was like unlikable for some reason, but mostly was likable mm-hmm. because she was clumsy and she had quirks and she had also like character and, <laughs> you know, we knew about her life. Yes. And her interests mm-hmm. and her hobbies. And with Anna, I'm like, I don't know who the fuck you are. And I've read a thousand pages from your perspective, from your brain. Yep. And I have no sense of who you are as a person. It's what? a shame. What? Who is she? Like, literally, who L- is she? Literally, who is she? <laughs> I don't know. We send out smoke signals. Like, anyone? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> I just, I will never stop thinking about, like, the who is my mother joke about her <laughs> shit. Like, I just want to know. Oh, God. Okay. Um, this week, we are reading chapters seven and eight from yep. Fifty Shades Freed. This book is taking a million years. I know that we just started reading it, but I feel like we've been reading it for three years. That's just how I feel. Yeah, I mean, I get um, it. So, last week, where we finished off um, was Anna looked down at that, like, CCTV or whatever and was like, holy shit, that boy, that's Jack Hyde. (sighs) Shocker, truly, to (laughs) absolutely (laughs) no one but Anna. Um, Now, chapter seven starts off um, with Christian questioning her judgment. Hi, welcome to Fifty Shades. If you weren't aware, um, every action that Anna takes is questioned by her husband. Her husband! Her, yeah, uh, <laughs> her life partner. <laughs> the person that she took vows to. Forever. Um, <laughs> and so the thing about it that I thought was kind of wild is all of a sudden, Anna, who last week did not know who, what an unsub was, <laughs> from a blurry CCTV paused 
photo, like an yeah. image of a video, is like, oh yeah, um, the line of his jaw and the earrings and the shape of his shoulder and the right <laughs> build. Um, oh, and he's wearing a wig. Yeah, everything about that screams Jack Hyde. <laughs> what? She's but like, I, uh, computer enhanced. <laughs> what the fuck? What? It doesn't make any sense. When did she become a super ma- Like, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand this person. I know I always come back to this, but, like, she doesn't know what a butt plug is. <laughs> like, she didn't know how to write an email or set but up a computer. But she's criminal minds. <laughs> yeah. She's just a, lives a double life where she can just spot people in disguises in a blurry-ass fucking screen grab. She's that. Footage. She's that fucking guy, that fucking elf dude from Numbers, who's just oh like God. shuffling <laughs> clues around. Yeah. Hey, when was the last time you watched the Santa Claus? Uh, a couple years, probably. Isn't it a shame Tim Allen's in that? Yeah. That's how I feel too. Maybe um, Tim Allen was kind of a good guy. Maybe not good, but like not a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when he wasn't a villain? <laughs> he was a cartoon villain. Remember when he? Remember the good times like a when him? Mustache. <laughs> Remember the good times when him and Elon Musk didn't team up to try and ruin the world? Yeah. Yeah. What a crazy world that we live in, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. Oh man. <laughs> Back when we had milk and glass <laughs> bottles, you know? Oh, my God. Anyways. Um, so, this fucking CCTV goes on for way too long. Um, they're talking about, like, hard drives and bullshit and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and this fucking guy named Barney who's, like, way too good at his job and all this shit. Um, and then all of a sudden, Anna, who's, like somehow knows all this shit surprisingly helpful in this moment right like she was able to spot jack i didn't know how she knew all of these details about him (laughs) um but she did right super helpful love it um and then all of a sudden christian's like well mrs gray it seems that you're not only decorative but useful too Uh, um sorry uh, husband uh, what what the fuck? Who says stuff like that? Fine. <laughs> We're having a great time. This is good and it's fine and everything's cool. Yeah, I just married my spouse who I consider decorative. What? Uh, I'm so over this whole series. It's I so hate it. Bad. This one is so much worse. It's so bad. And then right after that, he's like, go, wife, go make me food. Surprise me. Go make me food. Um, Which she decides to go make subs. As you do. As you do. Um, So she leaves to go to Subway. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Because she's a petty bitch who I love a lot. Could you fucking imagine? She just slaps down a cold... (laughs) Soggy Subway. sandwich. Yeah. Subway flatbread. <laughs> it's like, here you go, asshole. She gets him, like, a tuna sandwich on flatbread with, like, <laughs> extra mayo. <laughs> it's just, like, the worst possible sandwich. She got a bag of chips and just crushed it all in there. And just oh. In the sub. Oh, I'm actually nauseous. Although, um, the, what actually happened might have been worse, because she goes in and, uh, oh my god, I keep forgetting her name. Mrs. something. Mrs. Jones. <laughs> Mrs. Jones is there, and she's like, oh, I can make food. And she's like, no, 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 I want to do this myself. And then immediately she's like, so how do I make a sandwich? <laughs> For real, though, she <laughs> asks how... Mrs. Jones is like, uh, you can put whatever you want in a sandwich. <laughs> you like, fucking is adult? This, is this real life? Am I reading this with my own eyes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Jones effectively was just like, Google it. Bye. <laughs> it's like, here's some bread. 
and just there's a whole fridge. You could just put whatever. Go wild. You can put whatever you put want. Put a fucking vinegar bottle in it, Anna. I don't give a shit. <laughs> she literally tells her, like, he'll eat anything with French bread around it. <laughs> put a wrench in there. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't get paid enough for this. No. <laughs> she spent like hours on this bolognese sauce and nobody's eating it. No. And so like, she's I like. I guess I'll freeze it with everything else I make. <laughs> <That was good. laughs> <laughs> God, Poor Mrs. Jones. Jones. Yeah, for real. She is honestly doing the Lord's work. Yeah, at least Nobody she's getting some get- dick out of it, but like, God True. damn. <laughs> It's not enough, though. No. No. Mm-mm. Yeah. So, eventually, Anna, after trying out putting a whole mustard bottle <laughs> in this friend's bread, <laughs> is like, oh, ham might work. Also, <laughs> a whole avocado. Yeah. You know, balance. Right, yes. And of course it's perfectly ripe. And she's like, ooh, I'm like, how would you even know that, Anna? You don't know how to make a sandwich. <laughs> you didn't know what to do with bread. How the fuck do you know what to do with av- I mean, she is a millennial, so like. Uh, yeah, I guess she's like, oh, I'm drawn to this. I know what this is. This is familiar. <laughs> yeah. And this she beautiful did- thing that you spend $9 to put it on toast, that's just here? It's just sitting here? <laughs> In my yeah, own she- brain? She didn't know what to do with bread, but she knew how to add salt and lemon to mashed avocado. What the fuck? Fuck (laughs) off, E.L. James. Like, get out of here. Anyways, Christian comes into the kitchen and is like, mmm, barefoot and in the kitchen. Wow. And then all of a sudden, Anna's like, shouldn't that be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen? And then he fucking death drops. (laughs) Like, he, he cannot, he collapses onto the floor. Like, what did you just say to me? (laughs) <laughs> he passes out, like, smacks his head on the table, cannot yeah. <laughs> handle what she just said. Yeah. Um, and he's like, no, <laughs> not yet. No, no. <laughs> and she hey, starts, like, no. barking at her. <laughs> Could you imagine, though, if that's how she, like, gave him the news? <laughs> oh, I believe like, that wholeheartedly. Or pregnant. He's like, uh, what? <laughs> I feel like that's exactly how she would do it. Yeah, I can't wait. I wholeheartedly believe that. He's like, no. Um, and so they agree on that. And she's like, well, well, um, you. <laughs> she gets <into> <laughs> you, you want kids though, right? Um, and Which, he's can like. Can you believe they're having this conversation after they are legally married and yeah. bound to each other forever? Communication. Am I right, ladies? Super great. Um, Let's talk and- about family planning after we are married. Well, you know, his aspect, his idea of family planning was just bringing a doctor over. So, <laughs> right. Um, Done. Yeah, right? Like, didn't he just bring the doctor over and was like, you're getting birth control now. So, I mean, whatever. Um, okay. But yeah, so his response was like, yeah, 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 kids, whatever. Um, I'm just not ready to share you yet. It's like, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> is that what having kids is? Is just like sharing you? <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah, um, what a weird perception of parenting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hate I hate everything about him, what he just said, and everything about this moment. Um, yeah. And so she gives him these sandwiches and is like, subs, and then just like winks 16 times. <laughs> because they're both not subtle at all. <sighs> Gross. They're, hey... I don't know if you noticed, Cody, but this book is the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's just hitting me, actually. <laughs> Great. Good, I'm glad. Yeah. Um, now, they, after having some wine, they start looking at the plans for their new house that Gia, who I don't think I remembered, has created for them. Now, Christian has decided this is the one place that he's going to relinquish control um, and says that the house is hers to decide whatever she wants about it mm-hmm. um, and consign whatever. Um, and the one thing that Anna's like, eh, about is the glass wall um, and wants to adjust that a little bit more. Sure. Whatever. Sure. 
And so they're talking about that, this house. Um, she asks about the playroom and if they want to have one of those. Um, and he says, Meh, maybe. Um, let's leave our options open. This will be a family home. And Anna's like disappointed. She's like, oh, yeah, a family. But that could be years from now. Again, communication before marriage about, like, when you're thinking about this would probably be a good idea. But yeah, again, you know. But why, you know, why? When you can just not. <laughs> then they... <sighs> Anne decides after this that she wants to watch TV, um, which Christian apparently never does. Um, and wants to make out in front of the TV, which, fair, sure, sure. why not? Yeah, sure. <sighs> but then, in typical Christian fashion, it doesn't end up working out like that. First of all, and, Christian's like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he says he's never, he's never done that, of which she speaks, mm -hmm. which, what? <laughs> um, but I guess it doesn't really surprise me that he's only done the sex and not, like, emotional intimacy stuff um sure but he is like pissed that anna has um and so instead of this becoming kind of a a teasing playful thing that she had kind of wanted um it kind of is but sort of isn't because he gets jealous and so um there's just the x files on the background as he's like Ugh, people have touched you, rawr. Right. Super horny show, by the way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Nothing, nothing screams um, talking about, quote, bases in foreplay um, yeah. like the X-Files, you know? Right. Yeah, I think we can all agree there. I mean, the X in X-Files is for sex, right? Yeah, for the the original title was the Sex Files, but they were like, no, 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 we got to get this through the network, so sure, got to nix that, you know. Yeah, they just didn't want all of the asterisks there, right? So course. it's just yeah. the X Files is just cleaner, more crisp. Yeah. Got it. Right. I got it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Listen, I get it. <laughs> that actually makes complete like that all checks out. So, um, from what I have seen of the show, what I love about this scene too is. And I was like, oh, Christian, as a kid, kickboxing and X-Files and no touching. It's like, yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. That's it. Um, you got it. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's about it. <laughs> so the next morning, they pull up to Anna's job. She's a little bit nervous to go, but she ends up pushing through because she's Anna and she has a job to do. Um, also, she starts her day off... Um, with this important meeting, and apparently things seem a little bit off, too. Um, I think that it also doesn't help that Christian sends her this weird email, um, especially noting that she hasn't changed her name, which, great, important, love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so she lets him know, like, hey, we'll talk about this later. Um, I just want to keep my name at work. Let's do this later. And she even mentions, like, this is going to be a fight, but I need to go to this meeting. She says it's, like, a two-hour meeting. Um, all of her colleagues are treating her a little bit differently than they were before the honeymoon. Um, also, duh, Anna, um, you were an acting editor then. Now you're not. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fine. Now, it seems like her Monday tradition is that her assistant comes in and they share lunch together. Um, and talk about their schedules for the week, which, cute, love it. Um, cute, 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 cute. Very good. And during that time, it's interrupted by Christian coming unannounced to her office and wanting to have a meeting with her. Super cute. Super great. Love yep. that. Um, and no power dynamics at play here. Nope. Everything's great. Especially since this whole time... He keeps saying Ms. Steele instead of being like my wife. Um, <laughs> Hi, uh, can I speak with my wife? <laughs> no, he's being such a fucking child because yep. he's pissed that and also like wasn't responding to her emails. And so he just barges into her workplace 
And it's like, hi, can I talk to Ms. Steele? The unmarried one who's not my wife because she hates me? And I feel threatened. <laughs> yeah. This is um, bullying. I want a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crime. Also, you're fired, but I don't know how books work, so please help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so he goes into her office and is like, so I'm just looking over my assets, um, and some of them need rebranding, um, and he's being, like, super clipped and being a real asshole about it, and so yeah. Anna's like, I don't understand, um, what do you mean? He's like, well, I think you know, um, in the my wife kind of way, um, <laughs> <laughs> and... So she tries to make this clear, like, Christian, I'm not an asset to you. We're married. Like, this is not, it's a partnership right. kind of thing. He's like, well, not, not to me. Meh. Um, and she tries to make it clear, like, Christian, you barged in on me. I'm working right now. Yeah. Um, and, like, you didn't make an appointment and stuff. I got a thousand books on my desk to read right now, <laughs> Christian. I'm overflowing with books. Yes. And so she tries to make this clear to him that this is, like, not about him, um, that she wants to have this job be about her, have something separate, and also have her colleagues see her for her and not for her name, which I think are all valid reasons. Like, right. she wants something separate from him, which is completely valid. Um, and so she finally asks him, like, why is this so important? Um, and he says, I want your world to begin and end with me. <sighs> and it's, no. <laughs> no. Throw I think it away. Throw she, your husband off the, out of the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just out of it. Um, <laughs> punch him through the wall. <laughs> just get him out of there. Um, you've already done so much damage in this office before. Just do it again. Um, I think the thing that frustrates me is that this situation is meant to come off, like, it comes off sympathetic towards him. Yeah, for And sure. that's not cool. Yeah. Um, so it's like, oh, he's learning, and he wants to, like, you know, have this partnership, and he wants to mean something emotionally to someone or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's like, nah, not like this, dude. Nuh-uh. uh 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 And the thing that frustrates me about this, too, is he plays the, like, do you want to know why you got this job, Anastasia card? It's um, fucked up. It's awful. It's fucked up. <laughs> and I, it's so inappropriate that he's having this conversation with her here on her lunch, too, right. like... Especially when he's all like, you need to eat kind of thing, too. Like, it's it's all buck wild and inappropriate. But especially, I don't like that he has all of this control. Like, the power dynamics here are, are very wrong. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that he tries to do, too, is he keeps saying, like, I'm doing all this for you because... The reason why I'm talking about my assets and talking about your name in the first place is that I'm trying to change the name to Gray Publishing because in a year's time, it's going to be yours. This is my wedding present to you. Surprise. And so he says this. He's like, well, so do I need to change it, the name to Steel Publishing? And it feels like it's so petty on top of everything else. And so she tries to explain to him, like, one, this is unnecessary, yeah. and two, she's way out of her league with this, right? Yeah. Um, she's not qualified for her job now, Yeah, <laughs> let alone <laughs> she, she this. She can't work the job she has that she just got given. <laughs> right. Let alone run the whole damn shebang. What? Yeah. So I think it's important... That she's trying to be reasonable here and explain, like, this is not what I want. I think that it's perfectly reasonable for her to say what she does want right now. Can and you believe? He, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and he's not accepting that. And he will not stop until she finally breaks down and is like, fine, I'll change my name. 
You could just fucking shut up and leave me alone. (laughs) Right. And that's what it feels like, is that she finally says it so that he will stop. Yeah. Not because she wants to. No, definitely does not want to. (laughs) Right. Um, And and so immediately he's like, great, I'm glad that worked out. All right, bye. (laughs) Yeah. And that's all I was here to do. That's not, that's not anything. Mm -mm. So he finally leaves. um, And she says, like, I lay my head on my desk, feeling like I've been run over by a freight train. The freight train that is my beloved husband. That's not, nope. Mm -mm. Um, That's not how Mm -mm. any conversation Mm -mm. should go. Um, And so, as usual, she sends him an email afterwards that kind of explains what she's thinking. Um, that is like, next time you come, make an appointment so that I can be aware of, like, your petty, shitty behavior. Yeah. Um, which, fair. (laughs) Um, when they finally get home for the night, she's pissed. (laughs) Understandably so. And it doesn't change until right before Gia gets there. Which is right at the end of this chapter. Yes, thank God. Mm-hmm. So, chapter 8 starts off with Gia Mateo getting there, who is the one who's, the, like, the architect for their new home. Um, and she's described very much like Christian's type that he has in, like, all of his business. Blonde, well-manicured, loves a good pantsuit, business, yeah. business. Business, business. <clears throat> Yes. And this whole scene is supposed to be about changing the plans of their home. What it's actually about (laughs) is Anna has had a little bit of wine and has decided, hey, now that I'm Christian's wife, let's show that we're a power couple who stands up for each other. Let's emotionally ruin this bitch. (laughs) But, like, for real, though. (laughs) Let's tear her to shreds. (sighs) She looked at my husband, my husband, for a second. It's over. Yep. I will kill her tonight. (laughs) It will be done. It felt very Bella to me. Mm Mm-hmm. So, during all this time, Gia's looking over the plans And Anna decides to go get wine for everybody. Gia, in what I assumed was a friendly manner, but is supposed to come off in a flirty manner, like, touches Christian. And Anna's like, oh, nope, 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 nope. And right after this happens, Taylor comes to talk with Christian. And is like, sir, sir, business, business, business. Hi, might I introduce you to some business? (laughs) Yeah. Sir, have you heard the good word of business? <laughs> um, and so during this time, Christian's like, Anna has complete control over the house. She knows what's good. Listen to her. So as soon as they're out of earshot, Anna comes over to Gia and is like, so here's the thing, Gia. You actually do have the right to be nervous because right now your work on this project hangs in the balance. But I'm sure we'll be fine as long as you keep your hands off my husband. Otherwise, you're fired. And it's like, oh. (laughs) All right. (laughs) And she, like, keeps looking at her and, like, looks down at her and is like, let me be clear. My husband is not interested in you. It's like, okay. All right, Anna. All right. And so Gia goes as soon as Christian gets back. Um, assuming that they have made all the necessary changes to what they had wanted. And, I mean, great. (laughs) Yeah, nice. Very good. The thing that's important about the rest of this, um, is he asks her to, Christian asks Anna to cut his hair, which for me seems like a very weird change of pace. Yeah, it comes out of fucking nowhere. It does come out of nowhere. The other thing that was surprising to me about this is that Christian, prior to what was, I think, about a week ago, 
um, I guess it was about three weeks ago, prior to his honeymoon, was in business with Mrs. Robinson, who and owned several hair salons. So I had to assume that he was in, like, he was able to go get his hair cut very frequently. And right. even though now he doesn't own them, should have access to any hair salon that he wants. So why in the hell does he want his wife, who I his assume, wife. his wife, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who has no, who no experience other than cutting Ray's hair. Yeah. Who was in, like, the military, so didn't give a shit. Sure. It's like, fuck it up, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but Chris is... Christmas. Sorry, Christian. <laughs> Christmas creep. Christmas uh, creep. It is here. Sorry, Christmas, Christmas creep is here. Um, I would never. Christian is not Christmas. No. Um, I'll put, I'm putting my foot down. They are not. But Christian is like business, so he can't right. go in with a whack haircut. No. <laughs> <laughs> like the audacity. But Allie, he's you know, putting down his walls and he's like trying to get his wife to like lean in and they're trying to be more intimate together and doing fun domestic things like cutting each other's hair. Right? (laughs) She could take a fucking razor to his neck during this. Like that's not, (laughs) he has severe trauma. This is not how you start. You start with a head massage. Yeah. Also this fucking scene There is more time and more detail put into this goddamn scene of her washing his hair. Not even cutting his hair, because I didn't even get there. Nope. Than any other sex scene in this whole franchise. Mm Mm-hmm. I know more about the fucking nape of Christian's neck than I do about his penis. (laughs) And I don't hate that. It's just so much. Right. It's just, like, not what I came here for. You know what I mean? In so many senses of the word. Right. Um, am I right, ladies? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. I I hate it. Yeah. It it feels like a written asthma video. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it felt like. It was like those ones where they like cut your hair and it's like whispering in you on all angles or whatever. And it's like the worst. It was like that. And then yep. Christian got too horny. And so they just started fucking. <laughs> yep. He didn't even get his hair cut yet. And, like, listen. No. <laughs> I love a good, like, hair massage. Hair. Head massage? I don't like my hair massage. That's terrifying. <laughs> I like my scalp massage, though. Sure. Um, arguably, that's the best part of <laughs> just getting your hair cut. Hair, getting massaged. That's terrifying. <laughs> that's, that's a serial killer tactic. <laughs> Imagine, picture this. My hand's just going to the bottom of your hair and just, like... Moving my hands around. <laughs> nope, that's a serial kit. Let's put the lotion in the basket. Like, that's, I hate that. Um, no. Um, yeah, I hate this so yeah. much. Uh-huh. Mainly because Christian could just go to any hair salon and is just like, rub my scalp. Like, he could get that done whenever he wants. Yeah. He could have that could in have his office. permanently living in his home just do that at a snap of a finger. I would do that. Are you kidding me? Not for him, but, like, if I was that rich. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. During this time when he gets so horny, um, the other thing, okay, so Christian, in this process, is, like, looking at Anna, and he's like, Anna, you have beautiful breasts. One day, (laughs) I will fuck them. Anna, who doesn't know what an unsub is. Anna, who doesn't know what a butt plug is. But knows how to identify a criminal. <laughs> looks at Christian in this moment and is like, my boobs? You're gonna... How are you... What? There's really no... like... Sorry. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you You're mean? Gonna... She like looks down at boobs, looks up at him, looks back down. And it's like, I don't... What? How are you gonna... There's no... <laughs> you can't. Do they? <laughs> Sir, that's not, that's not how sex do. Listen, I may be new to this whole sex thing, but I don't think there's a place where you can just put it. <laughs> She pulls out a diagram and is like, wait, hold on, that's not, they didn't tell me. It's like, was this upside down? Hold on, let me just, like. <laughs> 
Man, I should oh, not God. have been sleeping during sex ed. I should not. <laughs> I did not take enough notes. No. I took notes in the wrong places. <sighs> Anyways, they have sex. Um, Whatever. <laughs> she attempts to cut his hair, finds out that Taylor and Mrs. Jones are fucking, finds out Christian has a gun. Yeah. Um, that's Welcome not back gone. to the stage. Guns. <laughs> guns. They're back. <laughs> um, they're here. Guns yeah. and sex. They're happening in the same page. Yeah, wow. Fucking buckle up, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing that is important to know, that he's just had a fucking Glock, like, in the space. And that is about it. The chapter ends with Christian and Anna getting upset because they're touching each other. And mainly, if I remember right, Anna is like, "Mm, let's just tie each other up. And um, at the end of it, Anna's like, Christian, don't. Don't get upset. Um, and by the end of it, Christian's just like, and he just groans and closes his eyes and, um, by the end of it, they're fine and they just start fucking and that's how the chapter ends. Sure. Yeah. You know, as you do. As you do. So next week, chapters nine and ten. Oh! Sure. Great. (laughs) Um... Here's what I'm thinking. We got our patrons this week. Yeah. Um, how about we have them as some of the things that every Twilight stand did in 2008? Ooh, yes. Great. So we found this BuzzFeed article um, that is, it's a listicle of 31 things every Twilight stand definitely did in 2008. So our patrons, um, I'd love to sh- thank Shannon Clearwater, one of our $10 sponsors. Shannon Clearwater definitely was number 15, argued over whether Team Jacob or Team Edward was superior. Oh. Mm. Shout out to Katie Weber. Who, in 2008, Googled what Forks looks like in real life. Oh my god. The same. And, <laughs> okay, shout out to Simon Steele, our $25 uh, patron, <laughs> who is number 25. Um, told everyone random facts you knew about the series, even when you knew they didn't want to hear them. So, same. Me, always, literally, every time. Um, <laughs> every day of my life. <laughs> every day. <laughs> um, this week, we have another fan fiction corner by Hannah P. Fuck. I know. <laughs> I. The God hero damn. we deserve. Hannah. <laughs> Hannah. Stepping what? in. Stepping up to bat. Uh. <sighs> Hannah. No, okay. Her nickname is Hannah Twos. Hannah, step up to the streets. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Um, She's stepping up to the occasion. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you. Hannah has a propensity for sending just a link in these emails <laughs> to me. Um, thankfully, the subject line says fanfic, so, like, I know what I'm getting into. Sure. But honestly, it could be a fucking trap, you yeah. know? And I still click it. This week is a fan fiction that says, what should have happened at the hardware store? And the author is Xanafina. I'm just gonna get the fuck into it. Miss Steele, my eyes snap up to take in a man wearing all black and so broad I felt like an ant in front of him. He was wearing dark sunglasses, but he removed them and his eyes, his blue eyes were soft. My name is Taylor. I'm Mr. Gray's head of security. My muscles stiffen at the mention of his employer. Please, I'm not interested. I won't be calling for that photo shoot. He'll be lucky if I don't call the police. I briefly wonder if this is a smart thing to say to Christian's employee, but I can't help it. I'm on an adrenaline buzz now. I anticipated that. Taylor slides an envelope across the counter, and I'm surprised at his words. Mr. Gray is unstable. I apologize for his behavior. 
I will personally make sure he doesn't bother you again. If you would kindly not call the police or put today's events into Miss Kavanaugh's article, I'm blown away. This is a normal occurrence. I let out a deep breath that I didn't even know I was holding. Thank you. I don't want your money, but I appreciate you looking out for me. Take it anyway. He slides his sunglasses back onto his face, and I'm reminded of a secret agent in the movies. Even his voice is slightly accented. Good day, Miss Steele. He turns and moves out of the store with lion-like grace, and I put a hand over the envelope before me. I guess that solves that. So, Christian Grey, huh? Paul approaches me, and I shove the envelope quickly into my coveralls. Yeah, not really all that he's cracked up to be. I laugh, and it feels good. I gently flatten out the collar of his coveralls and smile warmly. Would you, um, maybe want to go out tonight? End scene. All right. All right. All right. My wife. All right. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I just, you know, just some gold hard cash to take a new man on a date, you know? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm just saying. As we say in Seattle, mm, a bit. get whipped and buy our merch. Yeah, buy it. Buy it and buy. Yeah. <laughs> this is an Earbud Media production. You can find us on Twitter at Earbud Media and listen to the rest of our shows. You can find this show on Twitter at Into the Twilight, as well as Into the Twilight.show. You can send us an email at Into the Twilight Show at gmail.com. You can also become a sponsor of the show or buy some merch at Into the Twilight.bigcartel.com. Our art is done by Maddie Padilla, who you can find at Your Ghost Toast 44 on Instagram, and our music is done by Eli Krause, you can find at Eli Sour Krause and Krausefilms.com. The intro and outro is by KB Smith. You can find at KB underscore underscore Smith on Twitter. You can find Allie on Twitter at Into Wild Places, and you can find me at Dyke Discourse. You've been listening to Earbud Media Production. Earbud Media, audio for everyone.